Hello and welcome back to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. The best workshop in the history of um, electronic workshops. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Anyway, what if I was to tell you that you could send sound through light. You might think I was absolutely crazy, but it's true. Um, that second thing I said, not the first thing, although I think that applies for the first thing as well. Let's just do a little experiment here. I have a solar cell, and I'm going to connect that up to my amplifier, and let's have a listen to what we get. hear that? That's the light coming into the solar cell and then being fed into the amplifier. If I cover the solar cell, you can hear it goes away. Uncover the solar cell and it comes back. So this is what's happening right here. So the room is being lit up by fluorescent lights. And let me just try to find a pen that actually still writes. So, let's pretend this is the waveform coming in. Alright? I don't believe it. Even this pen doesn't write. So this is a waveform of the mains voltage. Which over here is about 240 volts average RMS. So, the up and down represents voltage, and the left and right represents time. So, we start out at zero volts, then it climbs up to about 330 volts, just a peak of the mains voltage, and then it dips down, changes direction, and goes negative to about 330 volts, then goes back up again and starts over. Now the thing is, a fluorescent light doesn't care whether this is positive or negative. It's going to light either way. And this is changing direction a hundred times a second, and that's what we heard coming out of the solar cell. Okay, so I have now connected the solar cell up to my oscilloscope. And as you can see on the frequency counter there, 100 hertz. And of course, if I cover the solar cell up, you'll see the waveform disappears. And when I release it, it comes back. But surely we can use this for something a bit more interesting than just receiving a 100 hertz tone. Or 120 hertz tone if you're in the US. And in fact, yes, we can. So I've made a little circuit which is going to turn sound into light. And this is the schematic for those of you who want to have a look. It's a very simple circuit uses a single transistor to modulate the brightness of a few LEDs. So let's just power this up. You can see the LEDs come on. So this control here varies the average brightness of the LEDs. So I can have it all the way up or completely off or anywhere in between. Let's just put it back to there. And this control here controls the amount of modulation we get. So I'm going to play some music, and you'll see these lights flicker in time with the sound. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with the rest of that, but let's set this thing up so we can actually transmit some audio. Okay, so, got a little light modulation circuit set up, got the solar cell right next to it. Now, I'm going to have to do this with the lights off, because if we just zoom out on the scope, you can see some of that 100 hertz coming through, so... Turn the lights out. And I'm going to put a 500, um, yeah, 500 hertz tone into it. And, okay! Yeah, so, 
we're probably grossly overbiased or underbiased here. I'm going to turn the input level down. All right. Turn that up a bit. Now I'm going to adjust this. I want to get this as close to a sine wave as possible. Let's see, okay, yeah, we're starting to distort there. Let's try and get this as much modulation as possible. That seems to be just about there. It's not a perfect sine wave, but I think that will do. It's a bit more like a sine wave if I zoom out. Yeah, I think we might just have been over-modulating the solar cells. Just see if we can get that fine, fine adjusted. Okay, I'm just going to bring up the input a bit more. Yeah, that's really starting to distort there, so... Yeah, let's have it about there. Right, well, um, I think the very next thing to do is to try this with some audio. Right, well, got our sound going into the solar cell, and I have the solar cell connected up to the amplifier, so if I turn this on, you can hear the tone. I'm going to put my hand in between the lights and the solar cell. Alright, let's turn that off, because that is rather annoying. But I know what you're wondering. What does music sound like through this? Well, not going to keep you waiting. Let's, uh, let's play some Commodore 64 music through this. I think that's sounding pretty good. mechanical volume control. So yeah, actually that sounds a lot better than I thought it would be. There's not a lot of top end, but frequency response is actually a little bit wider than I thought it would be. Alright, let's upgrade to the Amiga. Just to prove this is going through the solar cell. So that really doesn't sound too bad. I mean, there's almost no high frequency response, but that's to be expected. Finally, I'm just going to try this with an audio from view. No. Going to try this with some speech. This is Radio TV Phono Nerd. Don't play a grassley, they're junk. This is Radio TV Phono Nerd, and we have some unboxing to take care of. Now, uh, what's supposed to be in this box? The first existing talking book machine for the blind and critical right, handicapped. Uh, okay, Mr. Carlson, he has good audio, so uh, let's see what that sounds like through this. Oh, my stupid computer's doing that thing again where it says it doesn't recognize the video formats. On about one out of every ten videos I play on YouTube, I get this stupid message. And it's always on those particular videos. Alright. So I go to, okay, yeah, click here for frequently asked questions. And it says everything's okay. So, I go back to enjoy YouTube. Let's try to play that video again. And it does it again. Let's try another video. Um, let's try let's try big Clave's videos. Oh no. And it's playing fine. And my t-shirts are heavily sold and yet there is no power. What will I do? 
Fortunately, I have this Purit light. Way loud. The miraculous USB Purit washing machine. Oh, okay. Right, well, let's uh, unbox this and see what we get. Hello? Testing? My name is Charlie, I've got big boobies. Well, from those tests, I'm sure you can tell that it actually works pretty well. It actually works a little better than I thought it would. But anyway, enough with the solar cell stuff. Let's move on to something else. Okay, friends. My fellow YouTubers. I think it's time to try something else. Let's try it with a phototransistor. A proper phototransistor. Okay, it's not a phototransistor, it's a photocell. A vacuum tube photocell. I think this might have a better frequency response than the solar cell. It also came with a letter showing the pinouts and how to wire it up. And this was also apparently sent in by Mike, so uh, thank you Mike. So I'm going to get on with that now, wire this up and let's see what we can do. I'm going to expand on the circuit a little bit though. So, I'm going to add a capacitor here to block any of the DC. And these two LEDs to clamp the voltage so we don't get any nasty high voltage spikes going into the amplifier. And for those of you curious about how I connected up the solar cell, well, I think that pretty much explains it. There's no filament to concern ourselves with, but we are going to need a 90 volt supply for this. I think this should give us our 90 volts we need. Yeah, I think this will be an adequate power supply for that too. Alright, well, this rather bizarre contraption is our 90 volt power supply. And I'm not going to touch that because I did drown this and this cap is still charged, so I want to be, you know. Right, well, here it is. A rather compact build. So, I think it's about time to test this, don't you? Okay, well, I have the oscilloscope hooked up to the circuit. And I haven't even connected power yet and already I'm getting something on the screen. So I'm just hoping that's going to clear up as soon as I connect our 90 volts. So, here we go, connecting the 90 volts. I've got to be careful now because there is 90 volts flowing through the circuit. Nothing much seems to have changed. Anyway, I've got this bicycle light here with some nice bright red lights on it. So I'm going to put the... Now, it looks like this light is on continuously, but if I wave it about from the camera, you might be able to see that it's sort of dotted. So, this light is actually going on and off pretty quickly. So I'm going to shine this into the photo cell and see if it responds. And uh, yes, we do have... stuff. Alright, let's just increase the time base. Also turn out the lights. That might be all the, what that weird stuff is that I'm seeing on the screen. Yeah, that seems to have cleared up a little bit, but there's still a lot of stuff in there. Anyway, let's put our photo cell in. And yeah, I would say that is working. Well, you know what we got to do now? Alright, so, I have this hooked up to my amplifier now, so I'm going to shine this light into it and see what kind of sound we get. So, this is on flashing. Seems to be really responsive around there. Okay, now let's put it on continuous. Alright. Okay, I've just discovered a very strange thing about this device. Now, I'm going to completely disconnect all power from this. So, all it's connected to 
is the tape recorder. I mean the amplifier. It still picks up. Well, I guess the last experiment to do is to try to play some music through this. Which is what I'm going to do now. So, I have my computer connected up to the input of this circuit. And we've got the photodiode connected up to my amplifier. And let's play some Atari ST music this time. say that's working too well. Of course, I don't want to play it too loud, just, you know. Okay, now for the last experiment, we're going to connect this directly up to the computer's line in, so we can hear exactly what it sounds like. Because it's daytime right now, I can turn all the lights off so we won't have any interference with the lights. I just need to pull the blinds down, so we don't get any interference from the sun. And let's give this a go. So, I'm going to be switching between this and the solar cell, and we'll see how each one sounds. And I'm going to play the Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop theme, which is Simpsons Hit and Run. Well, you know. this has been a 100% successful experiment. Anyway, um, that's just about it for now, so until next time, goodbye.